That's an applause for me, not y'all. Now, there's y'all's applause. Yeah, I only get one. Man, I'm so glad to be back. I missed you guys. I was a little bit sick last week, and I was a lot sick last week, feeling a lot better. So, man, it's really unique um, when I miss a Sunday that, man, I miss this fellowship. And, and it reminds me that uh, it's important to have fellowship. Can I get an amen? Amen. And no matter where we come from, no matter what our thoughts are, uh, it's about coming together knowing that we need the love of God. I mean, hearing his word and knowing that he loves us. Can I get an amen? Amen. So today, um, I'm going to go over a sermon that has meant a lot to me. And the reason why I tell you this is because when you get a sermon as a pastor, and it is, it, it definitely is just something that hits your heart, you feel like you got to name it. So I named it Abel. Not Abel from Cain and Abel, but Abel who comes to the first service here at the refuge. Now, let me tell you why. Abel and I go to a place that we're not allowed to say the name of, but we call it the hill. And we go out there every now and then, and we get to love on some individuals, get to share with them, and learn from them as well. And it was Abel's turn to lead, and he had some scripture that I'd never had this perspective of, and it sent me on a journey into some scripture. And it was really cool because there's this understanding that you need to know today. God puts us together so that we can discuss him. God puts us together so that we can share about him. It says we're two or more gathered in my name. There I am with them. And a lot of people think, no, I go to church. I listen to the pastor. The pastor tells me how to think. That's not what God wants. And I know I'm going to be very unpopular with a couple, you know, within the pastor's culture around here. But know this, the pastors, the church, we're not the answer. And if we're good pastors, we point you to the answer. So I don't want to tell you how to think. In fact, I can't even judge who you are when you walk in. And some of you are very judge worthy. (laughs) You know, it's funny. Nobody's going, no, I don't. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about me determining whether you're a good Christian or not a Christian. The thing is, man, if you're looking at me, let me read this scripture so it points back to Jesus. And then all of us go to seek him. But here's the problem. Our culture is so inundated with tell me the information on what I'm supposed to think. We don't want to think for ourselves. We don't want to journey out there with God. We go, no, I go to this church because this pastor says what I like. Boy, I sure am glad. God doesn't tell me what I like, but tells me the truth. And a lot of times, I don't like it. Can I get an amen? Amen. So today, know this. We're here together. We're going to read the Word of God. Always reading the Word of God to push you to Jesus, to get you to seek Jesus. Not to seek the church, not to seek the Christian culture, but to seek Jesus. And understand, seeking Jesus and saying that you're a Christian is not defined by your attendance in church. It does, it's not defined by what music you listen to and all these different things, all these do's and don'ts. We think that defines us, right? And then, and then what we do is we begin to be egotistical because we go to this church or this church. And, and, and then we begin to be devised and, or divided and, and the enemy just absolutely loves to tear that stuff apart. And then now we're not fighting on who Jesus is, we're fighting on how Jesus is. My God wouldn't do that. Be careful with your mouth when you say things like that. My God wouldn't do that. Who says he's your God? Are you able to say, I choose you, God? God's like, no, I chose you. And I'm not coming to where you are. You need to hear that. Loving God is not to get him to come to where we are. Loving God is for us to be where he is. And you can be where he is right now. It's not when you die. And hear me on this. It's not about heaven or hell. There is a heaven or hell. There is blessing and consequence. But it's about knowing and believing Jesus. Somebody can come to me and not look Christian. You know who you are. There's a lot of times I don't look Christian. In fact, I get this a lot. What do you do? I pastor a church. 
Really? <laughs> yes. Well, tell me about your church. <laughs> then you're really not going to believe I'm a pastor. <laughs> right? And I'll never forget, I went to God and I said, Lord, man, I, I want to be used by you. And, and I felt like I heard the Lord, Travis, I need you to go out and be a very famous white Christian rapper. And I went, yes, Lord. May I be known by all for your glory. And I realized it wasn't God. It was me. So then I said, Lord, I feel that you're calling me to start the greatest church. God's like, go ahead and think what you're going to think. And I said, no, Lord, it'll be the greatest church. It'd be awesome. All the lawyers and attorneys and doctors and everybody who's rich and great citizens are going to come to this church. And God said, I will send you the best. I will send you the best, the broken. And what I've learned in that is it's not about me helping you. It's not about you helping me. It's about him helping all of us. Because guess what? I'm broken too. It just took my self-righteous self to realize I'm broken. That it's not about the do's and don'ts. I need a savior. I need somebody to come in and mess my life up. So listen to me. I'm going to say something right now. Once again, very unpopular. Used to it. People say I'm blessed and highly favored. You're wrong. No, I am. I'm blessed and highly favored. I got a car. I got a house. I got, I got kids. I got a boat. I got all these things I've ever wanted. I'm blessed and highly favored. You want to know what it looks like when you're blessed and highly favored? You lose all of it. You see, you're blessed and highly favored according to this world. But if you want to be blessed and highly favored according to God, you're going to walk it and you're going to lose everything to where all you have is God. You see, faith in God is not I got what I want. Faith in God is whether I have what I want or not, I trust you. I surrender to you. Jesus said it, not my will be done, but your will be done. He wasn't talking about monetary things. He's talking about death. You want to be blessed and highly favored? The greatest human in all the earth in the scripture was John the Baptist. Jesus said it himself. In flesh, there will be no one greater. For he is Elijah returned. How did John the Baptist's life go? He was an outcast. He was imprisoned. And his head was put on a platter. That is blessed and highly favored you and me lord i don't want me let me ask you this question if you found a formula of praying that you you learn to pray and god has to give you everything you want what's your life going to look like think about it we've all been there before right the way i think is right the way i want if it feels good it is good all these different things they say you know we're crying out to god i'm dying here i need you and he pulls you out of it Today I'm going to tell you a story in Mark chapter 9. It's a beautiful thing. Jesus, before Mark 9 and Mark 8, has gone up to a mountaintop with three of his disciples, his closest disciples. And as they're walking up on the mountain, Jesus begins to transform in front of them. He begins to glow. All of his stains on his clothes go away. He's white as snow. And as they're seeing this, Two other entities appear, and they see it as Moses and Elijah. I don't know how they know it was Moses and Elijah, because they didn't have pictures back then. (laughs) They didn't go, dude, get on that Moses website, see if that's him. They didn't have that, but they knew it. And then they spoke up and said, hey, should we be here? Should we build these monuments? In other words, they're speaking because they're seeing things they don't understand. And as they're trying to talk to what they don't understand, a cloud encircles them and a voice says, this is my son. Listen to him. And they freaked out. And they hit the ground in terror, blessed and highly favored. And soon a hand touches them and says, hey, guys, it's just me. Go ahead and get up. And they're like, 
what did we just see? Like, my mind is blown. I'm never going to unsee it. And Jesus is like, you see me here in your face. You see the culture I'm putting together. But just because you're in that culture doesn't mean you see me. See, many people talk about him, but they don't hear him. And the goal is for you to hear him. The goal is for you to believe. Not to say, look like this and do this and do that. No, I don't want to say that. But I I can't wait to see what it looks like when you believe fully. When you sit there and say, no, I died to self. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives in me. And you won't look pleasing to the world. Why? Because you won't belong to it anymore. You belong in His world. Where truth is truth. So let me keep reading. Jesus and the disciples are coming down that mountain. I haven't started reading yet. He's coming down that mountain. This is still Mark 8. And as he's coming down the mountain, he sees that his disciples are in an argument with the religious leaders. And here's what happens while he was on the mountain. It says, when they came to the other disciples coming down the mountain, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. Jesus said, what are you arguing about? A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him on the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Jesus replies, You unbelieving generation. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell on the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, the father answered, It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But Jesus, if you can do anything, please have mercy on us. And Jesus says, if I can do anything, if I can. Jesus says, everything is possible for the one who believes. So listen to this. And immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me believe. Help me believe. It's easy to say I believe, but I'm telling you, every one of us, we have unbelief. You see, it's one of those things where we have to say, Lord, I need your help. See, you don't have the capacity to say, I believe, therefore it is. I can prove it. Ready? million dollars. <laughs> Maybe it went in your pockets. Anybody got, got it? Check your pockets, because if you got it, we need to talk after the service. You see, it's not about us. It's not about finding out the secret formula and getting what we want. It's about the reality of going, Lord, none of this matters anymore. It's about you. And Lord, if I understand that, if I die to myself and give it to you, you say, now you'll find yourself. You see, now you'll become transformed. You'll be different. And you'll say, well, what must I do to be different? He says, surrender, believe. And this guy is saying, I know you can, but it doesn't make sense to me. Just help me in my unbelief. When Jesus saw that, a crowd was running to the scene. He rebuked the impure spirit, said, you deaf and mute spirit. He said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed the boy violently and came out of the boy. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Jesus replied, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Now let's break this down. You're this man. I want you to relate to this man. Got a sick kid. 
been dealing with this for a long time. You've taken this child to the best doctors. You've taken this child to the synagogue, to the churches. You've done everything you can to help your boy get healed, and nothing has worked. And here you, you, you hear about this guy named Jesus who makes the lame walk, the blind see, the sick are healed, all these different things. And so, man, i got to go see this Jesus guy, and you take your boy, and he probably has the to either chain him or bind him somehow because this evil spirit tries to kill the boy and, and he brings him in and Jesus is nowhere to be found. He goes to the disciples and says, where's Jesus? They say, well, he's up on the mountain. We don't know when he's coming down. He said, I, I need my, my son to be healed. And the disciples said, let us do it. So they go to the boy and they say, you know, all right, Demon be gone. Nothing happens. One of the disciples goes, you forgot to say in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. In Jesus' name, demon be gone. Nothing happens. What's wrong? You forgot to rebuke it. In Jesus' name, rebuke it. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Demon be gone. Nothing. And when the religious leaders hear what they're trying to do, they come up. And they're like, see, it doesn't work. Jesus is a magician. He's not real. And they start arguing back and forth. And there's this huge issue so much that Jesus can hear it when he's coming off the mountain. But you're the, the boy's father. And you got this group screaming at you, no, it's this way. You got this group screaming at you, no, it's this way. But if you're the dad, I just want to see Jesus. And lo and behold, here he comes. And you sit there and you say, well, what about these people? Why can't they cast out the demon? Why? Because they're focusing on casting out the demon. The miracle is not that a demon is casted out. The miracle is that Jesus believes his father. That's why Pastor Allen read the scripture that says, very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. I can do only what I see my father doing. It's not a formula. It's a surrender. It's a belief. Belief is something different than getting the outcome you want. Belief is saying, I don't care about the outcome anymore. Actually, I take that back. I do care about the outcome. I want my boy healed. But I trust you, whether he's healed or not. My family member's sick and they're dying. Lord, I'm praying that you heal them. Is there anything wrong with that? No. But if they die, do you not see that God is so good that they are now healed? It's because our perspective is only here and now. Lord, give me what I want. God help us if God answered our prayers. Amen. Right? Lord, here's my 94-year-old grandpa. Please make him live. Grandpa gets back up and goes, what are you doing? I'm tired. I go to bed at 3 in the afternoon. Wake up at 3 in the morning. I'm done. TV's terrible now. Let me go. Well, I can't. You're selfish. And listen to me. I'm not trying to tell you how to think. What I'm trying to help you understand is in all situations, those who truly believe, believe no matter the outcome. Jesus says, you unbelieving generation, how much longer do I have to be with you? Who is he talking to? Is he talking to his disciples? Is he talking to the dad? Or is he talking to the religious leaders? Who said it? All of them. All of them. Belief. When the man looks at Jesus and says, if you can do anything, Jesus says, if I can. And the guy's like, sorry, I've heard about you. I know you can. And Jesus says, everything is possible for those who believe. Believe what? And this is when I think the man started getting it. Not that you can heal my son. You're the son of God. That you are God right before me. And I have no right to tell you what to do. All I can do is surrender before you. And notice Jesus didn't make a big deal out of it. 
He grabbed that boy and said, leave him. Do not come back. And the spirit said, yes, sir. Think about that. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Because they know when Jesus speaks, it's done. There's no argument. There's no debate. When Jesus speaks, it's done. He's like the author and the finisher of fate. He is the judge. Nobody can stand before God and say, you should or you ought to. God will be God. In fact, the fact that I say he will do what he will do is still foolish because God's a mystery. He's not a woman. He's not a man. He's not limited to flesh. In fact, Scripture only says two things about who God is. It says, when Moses asked him, who shall I say is sending me? God said, I am. How weird is that? Talk about identity crisis. Lord, who are you? I am. What? You're what? Yes. Are you full of grace? Yes. Are you full of visions? Yes. Are you loving? Yes. Are you judgment? <laughs> yes. Lord, I can't fathom that. I know. So I'm going to send you my son. So you can see what it looks like. And his son didn't come and conquer the way we think conquering should be. We wanted his son to come and make things the way we want them to be. No, he came so that we could be freed from sin and death. And in order to do that, we got to surrender. So I ask you this question. Do you believe him? When I was young, I always thought it's what I did that determined whether I was a good Christian or not. So I wouldn't drink. Why? Because I'm a Christian. I wouldn't cuss. Why? Because I'm a Christian. I wouldn't smoke. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. And if that movie was that's demonic, I called it anything I didn't understand demonic. Dallas Cowboys, demonic. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, right now, yeah, in the name of Jesus, that is a, a bad thing. Right? And the truth of the matter is, it's like, no, man. I don't need you to be like me. I need you to be who God wants you to be. And I'm going to celebrate that difference. I know one thing that has to be in you if God is going to truly be in you, and that is love. Because the second thing the Bible says about God, he says, I am, and the Bible says, God is love. And we got such a messed up understanding what love is because love is selfish. I'll love you as long as you love me. I'll be with you as long as you do what I want. As soon as it gets hard, then you're the problem. That's the heart of the enemy. But to be able to sit there and say, man, I love because he loves me. To believe in Jesus is to do things he's going to ask you to do that you don't want to do. You go to him and you say, Lord, did you see that Facebook post? Do you see what they said about me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that. They're demonic. In fact, Lord, I know that you call me to pray for my enemies, so I'm going to pray for them right now. Father, may their brakes go out and their 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 tires go flat in your name. Hallelujah. When Jesus says you don't believe me, you just try to associate with me. You believe in a culture instead of believing in me. And you say, Lord, help me believe in you. And he says, if you believe in me, forgive them. And that's when we say, I'm going to need your help. Father, they hurt me, but I'm going to trust you. Forgive them. Who? For the record, I don't want to. Okay, I want you to write that down. And God says, I appreciate that, but you need to forgive. And that's when we begin to say, I need your help in doing that can't do it on my own and so you do this you say lord i pray for that jerk the spirit's like come on all right fine fine lord i pray that you help me forgive him 
and you take this deep breath and God says, you're seeking me. And when you seek me, you will find me. And he gives you his spirit and you feel good. And you're like, Lord, help me. And then you walk away and you go, praise God. And then you remember what they wrote. I can't believe it, Lord. I need to try it again. Oh, one more time, one more time. Let's do this. Let's do this. And what happens, it's not that you do it right and you no longer hurt. It's that you keep coming to that place. You keep coming to that place. And that's when you begin to hear his word. And that's when you begin to understand through trial and error who God is. You seek God, you'll find him. It's not that you have to understand this. You've got to say this prayer. You've got to look like this. You've got to do that. No, it's none of that. It is simply seek him and you will find him. And you may find him in a different way than I found him. You may hear his voice in a different way than I hear his voice. And a lot of pastors would say, no, it has to be this way. And I would say, how did he heal people? Well, one man, he just said, get up and walk. Another blind man, he laid his hands on him. One blind man, he spat on the ground, picked up the dirt, made it into a nasty paste, put it on his eyes. I have this theory. It's it's a weird theory. If the man could see, (laughs) I don't think he would have taken that. He would have been like, what are you doing? Jesus, what are you doing? That is not sanitary. Right? He said, go wash. And the guy goes and washes. What is this stuff? And then he can see. And everybody's like, whoa. And they're like, dude, you won't believe this. What? And he's like, he spat on the ground and picked up the mud and put it on your eyes. What? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't want to get an infection and go blind. Fasting and prayer. When I was a kid, I used to think, when I read this, in order to be able to heal people, I need to pray and fast. And so I'd pray, and then I wouldn't eat. I fasted for once a week, and it was disgusting. Because it wasn't fasting for anything else, but that God would give me what I want. The ability to heal. And if I had the ability to heal, would I give Him the glory? Sure. No. And I remember I'd sit there with my meal, looking at the clock. 1159, 3, 2, 1. I did it. And I'm like, I'm so spiritual. Gluttony, 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 gluttony. Right? But I did it as if God's going, hold on. Hold on. 5, 2, 1. (laughs) Power to heal. Good job, son. Good job. That's not how it goes. You know why we fast and pray? So we can deny ourselves. It's an act of faith. Saying, Lord, forget my flesh. I want you. I'm not going to eat. Forget my body. I can't stand my body. Not self-hate. You understand that? Not self-hate. But sitting there saying, you are more important than what my flesh wants. You are more important than what I want. And the greatest thing we need in flesh is what? Food. Now hear me on this. It's not about how long you fast. Because I've seen this. Fasted 40 days. It's pretty awesome. I bet I got a plaque in heaven. I'm like, you fasted 40 days and you're still unlikable? I still don't want to hang out with you? Right? Don't think it's you, right? Or, or, or prayer, right? Prayer is like, Lord, how much do you want me to pray? 30 minutes? I'm going to give you 30 minutes. And somebody says, well, I prayed an hour. And one person says, I prayed for two hours. And someone says, I never stop praying. And God's like, you're all idiots. <laughs> you unbelieving generation. You pray to me because that's your first act of faith. Amen. It takes faith to pray. And I'm not talking about just recital prayer. What do we do at the end of our service? We pray the Lord's Prayer. But it's not, we don't put it together and say, let's do this together just to say, man, that sounds really cool. No, it's because eventually if you say it over and over again, it actually becomes your prayer. My dad, who is in heaven, it is all about you. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done. Give me what I need today and help me forgive those that hurt me. And when it becomes yours, you're not reciting it anymore. It is yours. Seek him, you find him. I want to end with this. This man who is looking for Jesus. Today you're going to get opinions in everything. Everything. Somebody will say, an expert who considers themselves an expert on TikTok will say, Dr. Pepper is a health drink for you. To where I would hit it and say, amen, brother. I've been praying that a long time. And somebody else will say, no, if you drink it, it's going to kill you because it has this bacteria that was sent over from China. (laughs) And the truth of the matter is, no, it's not good for you. Tastes great. Could you have a Dr. Pepper? Sure. Can you stop drinking Dr. Pepper? No. Then that's a problem. Right? And here we go again. Let me go ahead and get a lot of letters now. You can have an alcoholic beverage. Some of you can't. Right? And it's not because you're weak. It's because you're a professional drinker. Right? There's some people that can go, I can have a sip, and that's good, but I'm done with that. You're like, why stop there? Why do we stop unless all of it's... In fact, I'm going to drink it so much so nobody else falls into it. (laughs) It's not about do's and don'ts. Do you believe? And if you believe, seek Him. Seek Him with your heart. When you read that Bible, read it. Not with any expectation. But I promise you, if you read it, there's going to be a point where you go, that's me. Oh, what? What? And and it may be one verse, and you're just like, and it starts getting to you, and you're like, oh, my goodness. And then you go to your friend and say, hey, man, I was reading this, and and this is a perspective I had. And they go, man, I have that perspective, too. You know what? You know, when I read that, it it shows me, i got to change this. Me, too. i got to change this, too. And now you're doing it because you believe, not because you're afraid. Not for benefit, not for failure. Is heaven and hell real? Yes. But you experience him right now. And here's what happens when somebody experiences God. They begin to change. Not off their own accord, but because of who he is. Now you're not doing it as an obligation to God. You're doing it because you love him. And you trust him. That even those things he asks you to do that you don't want to do, you know it's for your benefit. And the funny thing about it is, you'll change so much that the world will hate you. Especially many of you in here that came from death. The reason why the world hates you is because you're a walking miracle that God is real and can change lives. That's the evidence. Some of you in this room are going, I want to believe, Pastor, I do believe, but I keep going back into my stuff. Just keep seeking Jesus. Don't seek the formula. Seek Jesus. However, I will say this. If you need to be in recovery, read the big book. Right? Don't just go through it. Ingest it. And you're going to find out that that book, and I know I'm going to get unpopular with your hardcore AA people, has a lot of this book. People say, that's why I don't like AA. (laughs) You know what AA is? It's demonic. Why? Because they don't bring God into it. And I say, oh, why does AA exist? It's because the church failed to love the alcoholic. Why would they want to bring in your God? But I'm here to tell you, God doesn't have to announce himself to be God. Because they're seeking someone And when you seek somebody higher than you, guess what? You're going to find them. I'll never forget somebody comes to me and goes, my higher power is this table. Okay. That's awesome. It won't take, keep seeking. Because it won't take, man, it's not that table. I know it's, no, it's this plant. Okay. Keep going. You're going to keep going. You're going to keep going because listen to me. God is faithful. You seek him, you find him. 
We have got to seek. This sermon, which once again I call Abel, is not about the formula, but it is about the answer. I can't give you the answer. I can't say something that's going to make your life better, but I can guarantee you, He makes it better. Don't seek me. Don't seek Christianity. Seek him. That's why we say love well. What does that look like? It's between you and God. Let's stand together. When you pray this prayer, may it come from your heart, not your brain. Who do we pray to? You are in heaven. Father, I thank you so much for this family. Father, may we seek you with all of our hearts. And Father, may you reveal yourself to us. Father, do not make us like this world anymore. But Father, discipline us to free us from this world. Rebuke us to free us from this world. Father, I pray that you find us blessed and highly favored according to your will. Do all you have in mind with us, Father. We are your refuge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.